given. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for your Son. We thank you for the victory he brought into our lives. We thank you, Father, for this day because that is why we are gathered here. Through his victory, we are celebrating the lives of Christianity. Oh God, we pray that as we start this service, be with us, guide us, and lead us all through. In Jesus' name we pray every day. Uh, let us sit down as we say the prayer of purity. <coughs> prayer of purity of that day. Together, Almighty God, we bring the light things hidden in darkness and all the shadows of our hearts. Grant and renew us by your spirit that we may walk in the light and glorify your name through Jesus Christ. Amen. Some disappointed for today. Some disappointed for today is Psalms 118. Starting to read from verse 14 to 24. Psalms 118. Starting to read from verse 14 to 24. Psalms 1, 1, 8, starting to read from verse 14 to 24. And I read, The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory songs in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but him. I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has threatened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has become it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, so is now, and ever shall be. He's risen in our life, He's risen in our families, He rose again so that we can have joy, He rose again so that we do not shed tears anymore. Amen? Amen. So are we happy? to be in the house of the Lord.
appears, then you you also will appear with him in glory. That's the word of the Lord. Askari walikuja wakamchukua Yesu wakampeleka mbele ya watu wengi yoyo kamvua mavazi yake yote wakampiga zaidi ya mwizi yeye ajili yangu na wetu okoke lakini neno moja baba Lakini neno moja baba ye Sikia ye Kuhuni na umba Mapenzi yako ya fanyike Yesu baba Mapenzi yako ya fanyike Isiwe mapenzi yako ila Mapenzi yako ya fanyike Mapenzi yako ya fanyike Wakaburi ni siku tatu Yesu wangu Kufufuka kwa ke kumeni patu maini Oyo, wana wake kaenda kaburi ni Kutaza mama hali alipola zwa Wakakuta kaburi li wazi Wakaona mtu kawambia Wanini kutafuta liye Wanini kutafuta liye Kati ya wafu Ayuko tenda kaburi Yesu ameshinda Aliyacho shetani akilia Aliyacho shetani akioboleza Yesu ameshinda Hallelujah. Let me hear you sing with us. Are you going to sing with us? Yes, are you going to sing with us? Are you going to sing with us? Are you going to sing with us? Yes, are you going to sing with us? 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 Ayuko tena kaburini Ayuko tena kaburini Yesu we ayuko tena kaburini Wa Kristo tufurahi Ayuko tena kaburini Wa Kristo tufurahi Ayuko tena kaburi Yesu wa meshinda Baba hamefufuka Aliyacho 
shetani akile ya ani ancho shetani akio boleza ai baba yesu But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Father, we are grateful because on this very great, beautiful day, as we mark the Easter Sunday, the resurrection of Christ, indeed Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We are grateful, Father, because this is the day that you're just about to renew our hearts. You're just about to renew our relationship with you, O oh Father. Help us, O oh Lord, to be restored to paths of righteousness on this very great day as we mark the resurrection of Jesus. As we, as, as we look at, at the resurrection of Jesus in Scripture, may Christ resurrect in our hearts. May Christ resurrect in our minds, in our thoughts, in our day-to-day -day activities. Today, Father, we bless you and we glorify your name. Because as we've reflected on the words of St. Paul, in Philippians chapter 3, from verse 7 up to 11, help us, Lord, to follow the example of St. Paul, the way St. Paul followed your example. Our prayer this afternoon is that we will know Christ and understand the power of his resurrection. We bless your holy name this day. It is in the name of Jesus do we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Kindly let us be seated. Am I, am I audible from the back? Oh, good, good. So this day is a very important day in the calendar of the church and even in the body of Christ. So there are certain things that as a believer, anyone who calls himself or herself a Christian, there are certain things that you must believe. You must believe in what we call the triune nature of God. One God in three persons. You must believe in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You must believe in what we call the incarnation. You know what incarnation is? God becoming man. Because Christ, Christ came and dwelt among us as a, as a human being. For any believer, any Christian, across the body of Christ, across any denomination, has to believe that Christ indeed came and dwelt among us. And every believer has to believe that indeed he was born by the Virgin Mary, as it appears in the Nicene Creed or in the Apostles' Creed. You have to believe on the second coming of Jesus, that indeed he will come again for a second time. You must believe in the Advent. I believe that if you were in the confirmation class, you were taught some of these things that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to explain this morning. That you have to believe that Christ will come again. And you also has, have to believe that indeed he resurrected from the dead. That he was born by the Virgin Mary. Then he, he, he served his purpose. Lived in this world for about 33 years. Then after 33 years, 
he went back to be, to be with the Lord. So you have to believe that indeed he resurrected after, after three days. For any one of us who calls himself or herself a believer, you have to believe those things. So this morning, I want us to reflect on uh, the reading that was read from us to us from Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 up to 10. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 up to 10. Allow me just to go back there. Also a very powerful reading. And uh, it's a comparison from what Paul was saying. You know, Paul was a persecutor of Christians and he's come to have an encounter with Jesus. And he says that, he says that uh, I want to understand this Christ. I want to know Christ. I want to have a relationship with him. Yes, he confidently says that, yes, to know the power of his resurrection. How many of us today, when you're waking up from your bed coming to church, you purpose that today on this very special day called Easter Sunday, on Easter Sunday, traditionally, you're supposed to put on white. And I see quite a number of us in the congregation today are in white. Was it intentional or was it a coincidence? Was it intentional or was it a coincidence? Or you just woke up and said that today I'm just putting on this shirt, not minding that uh, on Easter Sunday, most of our liturgical color and the way people dress, it's usually in, in white. And apart from us putting on white, white clothes, clothings, and myself putting on a white stall, and I, I, I admire what St. Paul was saying. St. Paul was saying that I want to know I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection, to understand. To know is to want to understand, to go deeper. It's, it's deeper to know something, to have knowledge in something, in a certain area. You want to go deeper in this, in this thing called resurrection. I don't know if you, you came here this, this, today and purposed that I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. And apart from knowing about him, St. Paul was saying that I want to participate. I want to be a participant in his death and in his resurrection. I want to be a participant in his suffering because Christ suffered. When we were reflecting on the, on the, on the Good Friday about, about the, death, the, the, the death of Jesus, he was hung on the cross, nailed, and he died a very, was it a miserable death? In his time, Christ died the worst form of of death, being nailed with people who are maybe sentenced to death because they were, the, they were the worst of the worst criminals in his time. But here St. Paul says that I want to understand this Jesus and I want to be a participant in his, in his suffering, apart from me knowing him. And I want to become like him. That is what Paul is saying. That I want to become like him in his death. And he says that I want to attain to the, to the resurrection from the dead. That is why in the Nicene Creed that we recite every, every Sunday when we come to celebrate communion, it is said that uh, he resurrected from, on the third day he resurrected from, from the dead. And where did he go? Did he go to be with the dead? Or did he go to hell? <laughs> Confirmation candidates. Where did Christ go when he, when he, when he resurrected, when, when he died? Can God go to hell? <laughs> when Christ resurrected, what does the Nicene Creed say? Look at, look at the Nicene Creed. He says that he went to be with, he resurrected and when he died, when, where did he go? He descended to, to the dead. But there are some people who say that Christ went to, to hell. But, but the Nicene Creed reminds us that Christ went to be with, he, he, he descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose from, and he went to be with the Lord, seated at the right hand of, of God. And then St. Paul wants to say that I want to be like Christ. I want to be a participant. And to attain to the resurrection from the dead. So those are the things that I want us to look at today in Colossians. The things that, that, that must die in our lives today. What are some of the things that must die in your life, in my life today? They come out so clearly in Colossians chapter 3. 
made alive in Christ. Colossians chapter 3. Since then, since then, you have been raised with Christ. Paul was saying that I want to be a participant. I want to, to die and I want to be resurrected like him. So what are the things that must die in the life of you and I? Since then, you have been raised with Christ. That is why we are able to participate in, in, in this, on this Easter Sunday. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. The scripture says, very powerful, you must set your hearts on things above. You must set your hearts on things above. This morning, I'm just going to focus a bit on the mind of, of Christ. What is the mind of Christ to you concerning you and I? The mind of Christ. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Being a participant in the resurrection. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in, in glory. Then the scripture goes on ahead to say in verse 5, the things that must die today in your life and in my life. St. Paul again is speaking to the church in Colossae, that you must put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, those are the things that must die today. The things that belong to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. So we must put to death what we call idolatry. So the summary of the things that St. Paul has just mentioned here today, they are what we call idolatry. Idolatry is worshipping worshiping something else apart from the one and true and true God. Confirmation candidates, what is idolatry? The Ten Commandments, what are the Ten Commandments say? That we must put to death whatever belongs to our earthly nature. Because we must follow what Paul was telling the church in Philippi. That I want to be a participant in this death and in this resurrection of Jesus. I want to be like him. I want to know him. I want to understand him. But we must put to death sexual immorality, impurity. Greed is, is a very bad sin. Greed, lust. And St. Paul gives them a summary, a, a, a summarized name, and says that all these things are idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is, is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived. But Christ saved us. He saved you and me. For in our past lives, we used to walk. We used to walk in these ways. In the life you once lived. But now, St. Paul gives us another set of sins that, uh, that destroy our relationship as human beings. But now, you must rid yourselves of all such things. As anger. Anger is a bad sin. Isn't it? Rage, uncontrolled anger is rage. Malice, slander. What is slander? And filthy language from your lips. Then St. Paul goes on ahead to say that do not lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with these practices. So on this day, as we mark the resurrection of Jesus, we must, we must, we must not lie to each other. Since our old self is gone and its practices is also gone, we must put on the new self. You have to put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge, in, he, in the image of his, in knowledge, in the image of its creator. So in, in, in Christ today, the old has to go and the new has to, has to come. So what is the new thing that is coming in your life today? The new thing that is coming in our lives that, that you must grasp today is you must put on the new self which is bring, being renewed in the knowledge and in the image of the creator. So I want us to take note of three things this morning as we focus on the mind of Christ. As we focus on the mind of Christ. Number one, 
You must set your, your mind on things above. Number one, we must set our minds on things above. Then number two, we must put to death earthly things. Then number three, we are now one in Christ. We must set our minds on things above. So what is the mind? What is the mind? If I may just ask you maybe to think through without answering here this morning. What is the mind? The mind enables you and I to think. The mind enables you and I to think. It's in our minds that we make decisions. It's in our minds that we are able to make decisions. So the mind also makes us aware of the experiences and the things that happen around us. It's, it's, it's our mindsets that make us to be who we are. It's the way you think. It's the way you look at things. The experiences that you come across. The things that you encounter. So it is the faculty of consciousness. It is what makes us conscious. When we sleep at night, are our minds active? When we sleep at, at night, our minds are not active. But our hearts are active. When we sleep at night, our minds also are at rest. So the mind is what makes us to be conscious and to know what is around us. The mind also helps us to make decisions. The mind also makes us to know that this is the direction that we want to take. The mind is very important in the life of a human being. And the mind also, I believe, when I was, I was preparing this message, I was, I, was, I was thinking that the mind, I was, I was looking at the mind and knowing that the mind is a gift from God. Indeed, the mind is a gift from God. Because when you set your mind on things above, your life is transformed, your life is renewed. And as you live and operate in this world, when you set your mind that you are going to achieve a certain goal, you will achieve it. Because St. Paul, as you continue reading what he was telling the church in Philippi, he was telling them that, I want to know this Christ, but I've put aside all those things that I consider to be rubbish, but one thing that I want to know, I want to know this Christ. But I, he, he was saying, he, he had a mindset. St. Paul had a mindset. He was saying that I have a goal. And this goal is, to, is heavenward. Is to know Jesus and to be a participant. He had a goal. That was what was in his mind. So in, in, in my message this morning, I just want to remind us that you, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a rolling lion looking for someone to devour. Be alert. That is what St. Peter was saying. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and of sober. Be alert and of sober mind. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be alert and of sober, of sober mind. Sometimes our, our minds are not sober. Maybe when somebody is intoxicated, <laughs> they lose memory or something. Huh? Sometimes it is unfortunate, but sometimes maybe somebody falls sick and they lose their memory. Sometimes it is sad. But the scripture this morning is reminding us that we must be alert and of sober mind. Be self-controlled and alert because the enemy is prowling around. The work of the enemy is to kill, steal, and destroy. Then verse 2. Sorry. Second point. Put to death. Second point. Put to death the earthly things. What are the things of this world? We must put to death the things of this world. The things of this world is what we call idolatry. That is why Jesus, when he was teaching on the Sermon of the Mount, there is something that Jesus taught. Jesus said, that do not put up for yourselves treasures on earth. Our first point was set your mind on things above. Do not store your, for yourselves treasures in this world where moth and rust destroy. Then Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, that where your treasure is, that is where your mind, your heart is. Jesus said that where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. And I believe to, to some extent, where your treasure is, is where you're, you're, thinking, you're thinking a lot about you, 
your treasure. Maybe you're thinking a lot about your investment. Maybe you're thinking a lot about your car outside there. You don't know who's going maybe to steal the tires. Who, who's going maybe the children who pray around our estates. You don't know if they're going to, to pass by your car and they scratch your car. And then when you get out of the uh, house, you see the car has a scratch and then you become angry. Have you ever been in such kind of an environment? <laughs> so Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, he says that where your treasure is, that is where your heart is. So we must set our minds on things above. And we must store our treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy. Then number three, we are now one in Christ because of the death of Christ in Calvary at the cross. That is where we fast so love. It is at the cross that, is where, that we fast so love. It is at the, at the cross. We are now one in Christ. That is the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ concerning you and I is that we must set our minds on things above. We must put to death earthly things. Then number three, we have to be one in, in Christ. Paul was telling again the church in Philippi that make my joy complete by being of the same mindset, by being of the same thinking, by being of the same school of thought. Make my joy complete. He was reminding the Christians in Philippi that do not compete amongst yourselves. Do not be jealous amongst yourselves. May God help you and I to celebrate one another. Do you have people who celebrate you genuinely? Sometimes I pose these questions. Huh? That do you have people who can come to your life and find out that you have a deficit, maybe of a rent arrears or something, maybe a hundred thousand, and they tell you, Raj, I'm paying. Do you have a friend like that? Then they tell you that, Raj, I'm paying your rent arrears, but it's not a debt. Do you have a friend like that? That I'm, I'm paying for your child's school fees and it's not a debt. I'm just giving you. Then you, our friendship continues. Do you have such a kind of a friend? May God help us. As, as, as Paul was saying and telling the Christians in Philippi, that in humility, value one another above you, yourselves. And he was telling them that don't look at your own interests. Sometimes we become so preoccupied about looking at our own interests. Forgetting that there are also other people around us. May God help you and I to know that the mind of Christ is that we are all one in Christ. That is why when we celebrate communion here, we say that, for we are brothers and sisters through his blood that was shed at Calvary. May God bring to you and I people who love us genuinely. <laughs> Do you have people in your life who love you genuinely for who you are? May God help you. May God help me. Even if you make a mistake, they are still with you, helping you to navigate through the right ways. Do you have such a kind of a friend? Do you have those kind of people? May God help us as a family this morning of believers. That uh, in our relationships with one another, we will have the same mindset of Christ. Because Christ wants us to set our minds on things above on this day of, of, of the resurrection. Then Christ wants us to put to death earthly things. Christ wants us to put away idolatry. Then Christ wants us to be one, to be united. There's nothing powerful like a united people. And the enemy knows that. That if you are united, there is nothing that cannot defeat you. That if we are united as a church, I've always treasured our unity as a church. That if we are united as a church, there is nothing that can defeat us as a church. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful this afternoon because you've taught us many things in your word. Help us to have the same mindset as that of Jesus. Help us this 
wonderful day to set our minds on things above. Help us, O oh Father, this day to put aside our earthly desires. Help us today, O oh Father, to know that it's not about us, but it's about you. Help us to love one another deeply. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen.